Hi, this is Paula Day, uh, delivering cybersecurity talk with Andrew Hai. Hi, Andrew. How Hi. is it going? Pretty good. You? Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming for yeah, the interview. No problem. So uh, I was in the neighborhood. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so a uh, couple of words about Andrew. Uh, Andrew uh, is uh, or was a uh, director of research for OpenDNS, right? Yeah. And then you are a CISO of Data Gravity. Yeah. Perfect. And uh, w what were you doing at uh, OpenDNS? Uh, so I ran the research team there. So I had a team of analysts and data scientists that would track exploit kits and malware all over the world because we saw a ridiculous amount of the internet's sure. DNS traffic. So it was it was a great uh, a great corpus of information to do machine learning and analytics on. For sure. I mean, this is the perfect source of our data. Yeah. yeah. And what are you doing right now? Uh, right now, I'm the CISO at mm -hmm. Data Gravity. So because we are a startup, it's a lot of uh, internal security, but also external customer-facing security. Mm -hmm. So it's I wear many, many hats. So it's uh, er anything from research to helping close deals to helping marketing. It's kind of it's different every day. My job is different every single day. It's exciting, yeah? Yeah, it's good. Okay. So, so uh, I've got a couple of questions to you regarding uh, ransomware, mm -hmm. since, since this is uh, one of your subjects. Uh, well, how do you see ransomware right now? Because uh, that, that was a piece of code that was created a couple of years ago, and everybody was really surprised that uh, someone can actually ask for money after encrypting a drive and so on, and that went through different types of transformations. Like, what do you see as the trend? What, what is the future, actually? Well, so right now, uh, all the all the quotes and all the stats say that it's it's a billion dollar industry right now, a billion dollar criminal endeavor, uh, and you know it is going to get worse because it works. Mm. It's just like there's always someone to pay. Yeah, well, and telemarketing. People wouldn't do telemarketing if it didn't work. Mm. People wouldn't send you unsolicited spam if it didn't work at least some portion of the time. Mm. So there is always. And now that it can be monetized and people will pay it, then it's it's just going to get, it's going to draw the attention of more organized criminal organizations, mm. and they are going to adopt that because it's very low risk. There's no face-to-face -face interaction, and it's just completely decentralized. So it's it, it's kind of the the perfect crime to right make now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, basically, do you, do you see some like trends in the code? Because uh, I, I've heard that uh, sometimes we've got like, uh, well, there are different types of samples uh, right now coming out where you've got like a personal, personal shaming. Yeah. Yeah. There, this is something, this is the money that you want to pay, right? <laughs> <laughs> so there, there is personal shaming. Uh, there's also uh, almost nods to organizations. So like the No More Ransom project, yeah. which is a combination of Europol and a bunch of other organizations, um, there, were, there were variants where they were actually called out in some of the, the file names, mm -hmm. which is, you know, it's not really a, hey, yeah. thanks guys, it's a, you know, we know what you're doing yeah. kind of thing. Um, some of the other trends, it, you know, it, it became very opportunistic where people would take malware or ransomware and reuse the code, and we still see a lot of code reuse, um, but it really varies based on how the code is built. So if mm -hmm. it's an automated code generator where you can just kind of pick and choose what features you want, yeah. it could be very advanced, it could be just very simplistic yeah. and easy to detect, uh, but it, and then if you throw in ransomware as a service where you really don't have to do much of anything, you just say, you know, I'll give you a share of my funds, build this for me, and then you deploy it. It's really become very easy, or the bar has become very low to get started in the ransomware game. Oh, okay. And, uh, and what about like the, um, because it's like all around the world, do you see some areas of focus where ransomware actually comes from? Where it comes from, uh, there is a lot that comes from Eastern Europe, uh, from China, from uh, well, from North America as well, mm -hmm. and it's really where there are surplus developers that have a lot of time on their hands or have this idea that they can make money developing this ransomware, mm -hmm. and you know it's profitable. So in some cases, you. So Jeremiah Grossman did a great presentation yesterday uh -huh. where he talked about Somali pirates. Mm. They, you know, they could make 
$500 a year, or they could become a pirate and make $10,000 per attack. Exactly. And that's very high risk, high risk, high reward, where ransomware, it's very low risk, high reward. Mm -hmm. So there, there's been a lot of people talking about how the next blue collar job is software engineering, software development. Mm -hmm that's going to really pave the way for people saying, I could make a lot of money by being, you know, a little... On the edge, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah in this big gray area that no one's really going to, to attack me for or arrest me for. So, so isn't it a conclusion, for example, for uh, cyber units uh, of the certain countries that they should do a little better job maybe on tracing this kind of guys? Yeah, the, and they really have to understand the new technology. So there, you know, there's a lot of really good information sharing in organizations uh, within Europe mm -hmm. and it's, it's a constant evolving threat, just like um, the organizations well, the, the police organizations and the law enforcement organizations will make sure that they know what uh, you know payment fraud looks like mm -hmm. from country to country or wire transfer fraud. They know exactly what's happening because they're keeping up to date on that. They have to do the same thing with ransomware, mm -hmm. especially because it is a criminal enterprise and it's growing uh, in importance. So they are going to have to make sure that they understand all the nuances of ransomware and its capabilities and where the money's going. Mm -hmm. it's, it's with any criminal enterprise, you, know, you follow the money until you get to the, to the source. Oh yeah, but that's, that's a, quite a tough task. It is, it, it is. Okay. But that's why they got into law enforcement. <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's true. And uh, one of your specializations is also a graph theory. Yeah? Uh, I don't know if it's a specialization. <laughs> it's a, uh, a hobby or okay. a... Uh, that's a good hobby then. <laughs> yeah, well, when I was at OpenDNS, uh, mm -hmm. I, I really decided that I needed to learn graph theory and data science principles so mm -hmm. that I could communicate with my team mm -hmm. and then translate the, you know, the very technical details to a business audience. Mm -hmm. So I... You know, I really kind of put, I went head first into learning data science principles and graph theory, and it just, it was very interesting. And I was always very, very bad at math, and I still am, Okay. but graph theory. That's why your title of the session is like, if you were bad at math, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. for, for people who can't math good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's, I found that, uh, you know, for advanced data science and advanced analytics and statistics, you do need to know math, mm -hmm. but it is relatively simplistic math that uh, it, it's like, it's not, it's not math that you're inventing on the fly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, there the are logic. kind of, yeah, yeah, it's very logical. Mm -hmm. There's hard and fast rules. And with graph theory, it just makes sense because I'm a very visual person. Mm -hmm. So when I can see connections from A to B and then B to C, mm -hmm. but then not C to A, okay. I, you know, it just resonates with me and I don't know what it is. It's, hmm. it's, it's funny because I was terrible at art class when I was a kid, so. Okay, okay. <laughs> but then it turned into a hobby, so. But uh, let's think about it because uh, graph theory could be used for prediction of different types of things. Could we, for example, use graph theory for prediction of like subjects related with ransomware, where it's going to pop up or what's going to be the next trend and so on? Could we use it for that? Yeah. So when I was at OpenDNS, we used that quite a bit for uh, tracking botnets and exploit kits. Mm -hmm. um, and ultimately the, the end dropper for ransomware. Mm -hmm. uh, but you need to have a large corpus of information in order to actually mine that data and mm. make those those educated guesses and those predictions. So you can graph everything together, but you still need to have a base set of knowledge that you can draw from in order to connect all the dots. Uh, and there are not many companies in the world that actually have a great set of data. No, there, there's really a, there's a handful. You could probably count on both hands how many companies see that much traffic or have that much data. Yeah. And a lot of them are so customer centric uh -huh. uh, so that all of their all of their data is associated with just their customers. Okay. So you have to make a lot of inferences and and assumptions that uh -huh. that that your results apply to the greater world mm. as it stands. And you're, you're taking a leap of faith there. It's okay. not as scientific as if you had all of the information, obviously. Yeah. But uh, you know you can make sample, take samples of the data, and it can then be useful. 
make reasonable assumptions. Okay, that's cool. And uh, what if someone, for example, uh, that is like at the very beginning of their career, wants to be, for example, a ransomware analyst or contribute to the world in general uh, in order to help uh, worlds not to, not to be vulnerable to ransomware, what would be your advice? Where to look for information? Really, the best way to learn uh, how to deal with mal ransomware and malware in general uh -huh. is to use a home lab and just see what happens when you detonate malware in uh -huh. a controlled environment. Mm -hmm. And then you can see exactly what hooks there are, what files get encrypted, what other indicators are dropped, mm -hmm. and then see what the steps are. And then go back and just do it again and do it again and install monitoring tools. There's plenty of uh, forensics and incident response monitoring tools mm -hmm. that when you execute code, you will see what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, from there, you can start detonating them in sandboxes, uh, like Cuckoo Sandbox is probably the number one, mm -hmm. uh, I would say it's the number one hobbyist and threat analyst tool out yeah. there for analyzing malware mm -hmm. dynamically. Uh, you just throw it in there and see what comes out the other end. Yeah. Uh, once you ha get very familiar with that, then the next logical step is learning how to reverse engineer malware. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's several online sources where you can get that information and step you through some of the basics. And once you, I can tell you, once you start reversing and stepping through pieces of malware and finding um, you know, the passwords to decrypt or to step over things and mm -hmm. get encryption keys, mm -hmm. you, you think like you've, you, you're the king of the world at that point because I yeah. can do anything. I, yeah. Now I, I'm the master of this piece of malware. And it's, it's very satisfying to know that you can defeat yeah, because because you can see the end. Yeah, the, the end is understanding. So yeah. it's a, like a like a short or long term project, but you can see what, what's going to be the success at the yeah. end. So that's and very with, with time and repetition, you mm. become very adept at analyzing malware very very quickly. So mm. you know, based on you know based on what files it encrypts or what uh, domains it calls out to and the frequency at which it calls out, mm. you can say, yeah, I know exactly what type of malware that is. I know exactly, you know what is going to happen when I double click and it executes. Mm. Recently, actually, I, have a, uh, I had an interesting question because we do uh, a little bit of uh, malware analysis in our team. And one of the guys said, don't you think that what you're doing is illegal because you do reverse engineering and you have to have an agreement of someone who writes the software it, in order to analyze it. <laughs> and we were thinking like, hmm, that kind of makes sense. But on the other hand, will malware writer give you a license? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't really get an end user license agreement you when, you, really that, when yeah. you go to install malware. No. I would say that that definitely falls into the gray area, but leaning more towards the white side as opposed to the dark side. Yeah, it's more um, in this direction. In, it's, you know, hacking in general is is not malicious, it's to gain knowledge, and that's what you're doing. You're gain, gaining knowledge of how something operates in a controlled manner. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's not harming the world by doing what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And what about uh, a graph theory? Uh, if someone wants to jump into the subject, what would you recommend? You know, the way I started was probably yeah. a very uh, trial by fire approach where okay. I went to Coursera. So uh -huh. Coursera has a number of great online courses in data science. Okay. And it will step you through the various pieces and really work you up. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to focus on graph theory, but there are follow-on courses that will direct you towards graph mm -hmm. theory. Uh, probably one of the easiest ways to really get into using graphs in a security context mm -hmm. is using Multigo. Oh, yeah, of course. Because you yeah. can download that for free, and you can make those associations, and then start enriching the data as you go, and you'll see how the graphs build themselves out. And there's also free edition of it, yeah. Too. yeah. So, exactly. so, so whoever wants to start, it's perfect, uh, perfect uh, place to, to start from. Yeah, yep, exactly. Yeah, it's a good, good suggestion. And okay, it's visual. It's, yeah, and it's visual, <laughs> definitely. And uh, there can be a little bit of math underneath, but still, it's a visual. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay, guys. So let's summarize. Uh, we have talked about ransomware, ransomware trends. Uh, what is next? Uh, what is important to know? What are the areas and one, why ransomware writers do what they do? Uh, and we have also discussed the graph theory as one of the interesting subjects that uh, you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, guys, if you want to get uh, more information, uh, definitely make sure that you will not miss out um, our, our blog post about our discussion with Andrew. Uh, 
you and uh, make sure that you're gonna click on the link uh, that's gonna take you to the uh, blog post and uh, I look forward to see you again thank you so much for the great Thanks interview for me. Yeah, thank you